Hey guys, it's LEGO Boys E3. Today I'm going to show you intermediate four look glass layer on the 3x3. So this is my tutorial of an intermediate kind of way of solving the last layer of a Rubik's Cube. If you don't already know how to solve a 3x3, I'll leave a link down in the description down below that will say beginner's method tutorial and that will show you how to solve a cube to begin with. So you can learn this method whenever you want as long as you're still using the beginner's method on the last layer of a cube. So you can use this the day after you learn how to solve a cube to begin with, but I would recommend at least knowing F2L before you start on this method. That way you'll know how to do F2L efficiently and then you can go on to the last layer efficiently. So if you don't already know F2L, I'll also leave a link down in the description below on beginner's F2L and intermediate F2L. But that's not required, so let's get on with the tutorial for last layer. So this method can also be called for look last layer and that's because it has four steps. So later on in this tutorial, you'll see a thing around the screen like this that will say EO, CO, CP, EP. And those are the four steps. So basically these two over here are part of OLL, which is orienting the last layer. And so the first one is EO, so you'd orient the edges. So basically what that means is you take something like this and get it like this so that all the edges are oriented correctly. You have a cross on the top and yellow is always facing up. Next up we have CO, so that means that you orient the corners. So now all the corners are facing up and we have yellow solid on the top right there. Then the last two steps together are called PLL or permuting the last layer. So the first one is CP. So you're gonna permute the corners by doing an algorithm like this. And now all the corners are in the right place. And then finally, you're gonna permute the edges by getting the edges in the right place with an algorithm like that. And that's why this method is also sometimes called tulik OLL or tulik PLL because there's two steps to OLL, uh, orienting the edges and orienting the corners, and two steps to PLL, permuting the corners, then permuting the edges. So let's just start off with EO. So for each of these steps, you're going to have to learn some algorithms. And throughout this video, I will have pictures for each of the cases up here. And one at a time, I'm going to be showing the algorithm for that particular case on screen. So if you want to get back and skip to that particular case, I will have the time codes. You can see the numbers up there. You just want to skip to that time code using the little bar at the bottom. And that will bring you to where I'm showing you that particular algorithm. Additionally, I also have time codes over on each of these four steps if you want to skip between the steps. And I have all those time codes down in the description. So if that's easier for you to just click on them in the description, I'll have those down there too. The algorithms for this step are pretty simple and you might already know some of them from the beginner's method. Pretty much what it is, is if you have a line like this, what you will do is do an F move. Then you want to do this R U R prime U prime. That's called the sexy move and then F prime. And as you saw there, as long as you're holding it along this way like this, not that way, but this way, F, R, U, R from U prime, F prime, that will permute all of the edges. So now for the L-shaped case. So you're gonna wanna hold it like this so that one piece is in the front and one piece is off to the right. And so it's kind of like an upside down L shape. And you might actually need to learn a new type of notation to solve this one. And so instead of just doing an F move like this, we're actually gonna be doing a wide F move. And so what that means is instead of just turning a single layer like this, we're going to turn two layers. And so when you're reading an algorithm and you see a wide move, that will be annotated as F little w. And so that's what the first move in this algorithm is. F w. So a wide F move like this. And then do that same sequence. R u r prime u prime. Same as the previous one. And then F w prime. So that's exactly the same as the previous algorithm. Except the last one, you did just a single F move. This time you're doing a big F move. The moves in this middle are all exactly the same. Now finally, if you just have a dot in the middle and none of these edges are facing up towards you, you're just gonna wanna do those two previous algorithms in succession. So you do the first one, F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime, and then F, W, R, U, R prime, U prime, F, W prime. You don't even have to look at the cube in the middle, just pretend that it's one big algorithm, you're just smushing those two together. F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime, F, W, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime, and there we go. So now we're on to CO, so we're gonna be orienting these corners by moving them, rotating them up into the correct place. But there are a lot more cases and the algorithms are slightly more complex, so I'm gonna be going through quite a bit faster. So our first two cases are the ones where we have three corners misoriented. So when you get one of these cases and you count, you have three corners that are wrong and one of them that is correct right here, you wanna ask yourself which one of them it is. And so this is the first one of those cases. This one is called soon. And you can recognize this by looking at the corner that's solved and looking at these two corners that are next to it. So if you notice that yellow is facing you right on the right side right here, then that is the first case. If it's over on this side, that will be the second case. And I'll be going over that in a second. But for now, we have yellow facing us over on this right side. So what we want to do is just hold it so that this solves corners over here. And we do R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, 
our prime. Now if you still have three corners misoriented and the one that is solved is facing you and you look over on this side and this color right here is yellow, then what you're going to want to do is hold it in the back here so that this solved corner is in the back kind of right. This one is called anti soon. This one is just the opposite of the previous one. It's R U2 R prime U prime R U prime R prime. Now if you happen to have all four corner pieces misoriented like this and you look at the yellow pieces and there are two facing you and two facing away from you, just like this, this, and this. This algorithm is actually pretty simple. It's actually really similar to the very first algorithm that I showed you in this video. So it starts off the same. You do F, R, U, R prime, U prime, and then you just continue doing that two more times. So R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, and then do an F prime move, and there you go. Now if you have all four corners misoriented and you happen to have two facing you, but not two on the back there, you actually have two kind of opposing each other, like this and this, and two off to the side right here. You want to hold it like this so that the two are off to the left. Then you want to do this algorithm and pay very close attention to the way that I'm doing these moves because it's only really efficient if you actually do it the way that I'm showing you. So you do R, U2, R2, U prime, R2, U prime, R2, U2, R. Make sure you execute it like this. Now if you only have two corners that are incorrect, the other two are solved, and you look at the yellow colors, and one of them's like this, and one of them is directly opposite of it like that. So they're opposing each other, and you only have two of them correct like this. Then you're going to do this algorithm, which includes some more wide moves. So you want to do a wide R move like this. U, R prime, U prime, and then wide R prime, F, R, F prime. Now if you have a case where two of them are unsolved but they're diagonal from each other, you want to hold it so that yellow is facing in the front on both of them. So front and right. Not like this, where there's no yellow facing you, but like this, over like this. And the algorithm that we're going to be doing is actually the exact opposite of the one that I showed you before. So you do F, R prime, F prime, R W, U, R, U prime, or w prime. Now finally, if you still have two corners incorrect, but you don't have yellow here and here, you actually have yellow here and here right next to each other, what you want to do is hold it so that these two pieces are in the back. And so now you're actually going to be rotating the cube. And so if you look at the algorithm here, you'll see that little x prime in the front. That basically just means rotate the cube like this. So you want to have it so that these two pieces are facing upwards. So you start like this and you rotate it like this. Now you do r u prime r prime d, r u2 r prime D prime, R, U prime, R prime. Okay, so now that we're done with both parts of OLL and the top layer is oriented correctly, we're going to start off with the first step of PLL, which is CP. And this is just about the easiest step because there's only two possible cases. And what you want to do to figure out which case you have is look at these two corners on the top layer. So just these two, not these two down here, but these two on one face. And we're just going to want to compare these two corners. So you can see here that these are not the same color. We look over here. These are not the same color. These are not the same color, but these ones are the same color. So if you do notice that you have at least one pair of them that are the same color, then you have this first case. Alternately, if you notice that all four pairs of these corners are already complete and they're already all matching, then you have CP already done. If you notice that none of them are matching, then you have the second case. But anyway, back to this first case. If you have two of them correctly matching like this, what you want to do is bring those so that they are in the back. So you have two of them matching back here, and you just hold the cube like this. Then you're actually going to do a rotation. So we're going to do a rotation opposite of what we did before. This is called an X rotation. We just rotate the cube down like this. So now these two solved pieces should be way down in the back there. And what we want to do is R prime, U, R prime, D2, R, U prime, R prime, D2, R2. And that will always bring the corners into a state so that every single pair of them are matching like this. And once you're done with CP, what you want to do is bring it around, just do U moves, until every single one of these corners lines up with the pieces below it. Now finally, if you happen to get a case where this pair isn't matching, this one isn't, this one isn't, this one isn't, none of them are matching, then we have a bit of a longer algorithm that we have to do instead. So this one is F, R, U prime, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, F prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, 
R prime F R F prime. And there we go. Now we can just line up the corners by doing some new moves until they're all lined up like this. And now we can get on to the last step, which is EP or edge permutation. So there are four different cases in this step. The first thing that you're going to want to do to identify which case you have is look at each of these unsolved edges and see how many there are. So in this case, we only have three of them but sometimes you'll also have four of them. So sometimes this one will be unsolved too, but in this case, we just have three. And so if you only have three of them, that will be one of our first two cases right here. And you're always gonna wanna hold the solved one in the back. So we still have yellow on top, the solved one is in the back. And so the three unsolved ones are like this. Now to decide between these first two cases to figure out which one you have, what we're gonna do is take a look at this edge piece over on the right. You're gonna take a look at this edge and the pieces that are surrounding it. And so right here we have red and we have orange. So on most Rubik's cubes, red and orange are opposite colors. So basically what that means is you have orange over on this side and you have red over on this side. So if the two colors are opposite colors, like we have in this case, that will be the very first case. If you look over to the side here and we have something like green and orange, well, green and orange are not opposite colors because they're right next to each other on a cube. So that's not this first case. It's actually the second case. So basically you look over here on the right, if the two colors happen to be red and orange or green and blue, like we have here, the other two opposite colors are green and blue. Then we have the first case. So the algorithm for this one is R U prime, R U, R U, R U prime, R prime, U prime, R two. Now, once again, if you look over on the side color and they're not opposite, now we have the second case. So this one is R two, U, R U, R prime, U prime, R prime, U prime, R prime, U, R prime. So now let's say that we have four edges that are permuted incorrectly, kind of like this. Once again, we're gonna be looking at opposite colors. So just take a look at any side, it doesn't matter which one. Let's just take a look at this one, and you're gonna look at the two colors. So we have orange and we have red. These are opposite colors, so that means that we have this third case right here. So this algorithm is going to involve M moves. That's where you turn just the middle layer, so something like that, or just using a single finger like this. So the easiest way to execute this is just taking a look underneath the cube here, use either your middle finger or your ring finger, and you're just gonna push that middle layer up. And so when you're doing that, pushing up with one of those fingers to do an M move, that's actually an M prime move. So that's M prime, M prime, M two. So what you wanna do with this case where we have opposite colors all around is hold it however you want, and we're gonna do two M moves. So just push it with your finger twice, that's an M two move. Then you do U, M two, U2, M2, U, M2. Now finally on to the last case. This one you also have four edges that are not permuted correctly. And what you wanna do is just take a look at a pair of two of them and see if they need to switch around. And so in this case, they do need to switch around because you see orange needs to go over to here and green needs to go over to here. If you were to have it like this though, you'd see red does not need to go to orange and green does not need to go to blue. So that's not right. So if you don't have it right, just rotate it a single time like this, and then it should be correct. So red needs to go to red, blue needs to go to blue. And once you have these two colors in the front here that need to be switched around like this, you're just gonna wanna hold them so they're on the left. So one of them's on the front, one of them's on the left like this. So this piece needs to go to here, this piece needs to go to here. And we're gonna be doing another algorithm that involves M turns. So what you wanna do is M prime. So just flick a single time with your middle finger like this. M prime, U, M two, U, M2, U, M prime, U2, M2, and then U prime. And so there we go. Those were all the cases for two look OLL and then two look PLL, which is also known as just four look last layer in total. That's my intermediate method of solving the last layer of a Rubik's cube. I hope you guys found this method and tutorial helpful. Of course, there are a lot of algorithms in it, which you have to go out and memorize. If you're having trouble with memorizing those algorithms, I have recently made a video on how to memorize algorithms more effectively. So go ahead and look in the description down below and I will have that video linked down there too. So that's pretty much all I have for this video. If you need any help, be sure and leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you on it. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time.